What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. This is more of an overview actually. Um, so in this video I wanted to talk about some of the new features that are included in the new version of Placemaker that just came out. Uh, Placemaker, if you remember, is the one-click city creation tool where you can uh, import location data for a city and then create everything from roads to buildings to trees, that sort of thing. So before we get started, I do want to know I am an affiliate for placemaker so if you do end up purchasing the extension I do receive a commission I always want to be upfront about that with you guys um, in addition right now placemaker is on sale through I think January 15th of next year so it's 25% off and you can check that out either in the links down below or by visiting the sketchup essentials.com slash placemaker now let's go ahead and just jump into some of the new features all right so first thing is let's kind of review what you could do with placemaker before um, just to kind of give you an idea so just Generally speaking, the way that Placemaker would work in the past is you'd have this Placemaker dialog and you could basically import a location and then you can import roads and paths and trees and buildings and all that different stuff and basically you could import all of that either separately or together so in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just import everything so when you do that you can just click make place and that's gonna import everything except your imagery and that's gonna take a little while so I'm gonna let this run a little bit and then we'll get back and then uh, we'll uh, get back to this All right, so now you can see this is what Placemaker usually does, is it'll bring in all this different building data um, into your model. And this works especially well for urban areas. I believe this works all over the world for this piece, um, the initial piece. So you can see how you've got everything from roads to buildings to everything else. And that took a little while on my computer. And honestly, I think a part of it is my internet connection, which just isn't very good. But y you can see how you've got basically a detailed model of downtown Denver. When I do this, it's got the water that goes through downtown. So this is basically the functionality that Placemaker already had. So it's already a pretty powerful extension, the ability to build something like this, even if it takes a couple minutes. Um, if, if you can think about how long this would have taken you to make manually, it would have been a long time. So that's one of the reasons that I really like this extension, especially for architectural users. Um, so, so that's kind of a Placemaker's base functionality. Well, now let's get into some of the new features that they've added. Um, so one of the new features is they've added the ability to import forests into your models. And so basically the way that they've done that is now you can import an area, and this is a mountainous area over by my house. I've used this for my slicer tutorial the other day. But now what they've got is they've got this trees function where you can bring in a bunch of different trees. And uh, I'm using the map data and the terrain from uh, SketchUp's add location tool. So you don't actually add the terrain from inside Placemaker, you add it by adding the location from uh, SketchUp's maps tools and then uh, using the toggle terrain. And what you do is there's this option here for drop onto surface that you're gonna wanna select. And you can see this gives you a notification that it takes a lot longer because it has to do all these different calculations. And one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the tree spacing down a little bit um, because basically what you can do is you can set the spacing that it brings the trees in when you um, when you uh, create your forest. And so I'm gonna go ahead and run this up to like 100 feet just so there's a little more spacing between them. And then we're gonna go ahead and run this. And this is gonna take a while because it's basically bringing in a whole bunch of two-dimensional stuff. So what you have to do is you just click on your surface and then you click trees and you tell it to add the trees. And like I said, that's gonna work for a while, but that's gonna bring in um, a series of two dimensional trees and it's gonna drop them on this face. And actually that came in really fast because of the spacing that I had. So I'm gonna undo that and bring it in again. We'll go ahead and bring it in, man, as fast as that went, we'll go ahead and bring those in at 25 feet and see what that does. So, All right, so you can see when I set that spacing to 25 feet, that brings in a lot more trees. And you can see that brought a bunch of trees in here. So that's probably a little too many. But basically what this will do is any area, and you can kind of check this by going to OpenStreetMap. 
but basically any area in open street map that's set as like a forested area so any area that's like shaded green with the little trees in here placemaker will put those trees in those areas so now you can create those forests um, backing up to spaces so that's a new feature that's in and that ought to work let's see let's go back to downtown Denver and look that should work for some green areas like park um, let's see probably only if they're set as forests though so these are all in here as cemeteries so you'd have to have an area that's set as more of a forest so that might actually not work as well in town but you can see if you back up to like these mountains or something like that you can bring trees in that way so that's the first new function and uh, I think that's a pretty cool function especially if you're modeling things like if you're in mountain towns or anything like that um, so that's a pretty cool function Let's see, the second function is they've also added the ability to bring in some high resolution um, aerials from near map. And I will note that uh, these high resolution aerials are costly. Um, you do have to pay in addition to that. And the reason for that is because near map charges placemaker for them. So every time you bring in these high resolution aerials, um, near map or um, placemaker gets charged. And it seems like it must be a pretty high fee. Um, so you can definitely purchase new credits for this you will have to purchase credits in order to do this but basically what you do now is you bring in near map imagery and what you do is you select this you select this area wherever you want to paint that and what you do is you click on import map tiles and what that'll do is that'll ask you to confirm your imagery tile download so in this case this is the area around the Denver State Capitol and you can see how this this will know that uh, here's how many tile credits you have if you've purchased credits already and this is how many credits it's going to use so you don't have to worry about accidentally using those credits um, because it'll ask you to verify first and you can see there's an option in here for purchase credits when you click on that that'll take you to um, their website where you can do that but when you download these I'm gonna go ahead and bring this into my model And you can see how it's downloading, but it's taking a while. I um, mean, part of that is because I think these are pretty high resolution images. You can kind of see, if we look around the corner, here's the difference between the, um, here's the difference between the area that's brought in by the Google, lo or the uh, SketchUp location services, and here's the actual near map stuff. And you can see the near map image is far more detailed and high resolution. Um, you can see you can see the grass in here you can see all these different things so it's way more high resolution imagery than what comes in with the uh, with the imagery tool or the or anything like that so you do have access to this higher resolution imagery which if you're doing something where you need that if you work in architecture or something like that having the access to that information could be really good but again it is costly there is an additional cost to that so just note that but it is also an option and the other way that you can limit your usage on that is you can select smaller areas so I mean depending in this case probably what would end up happening is you know you'd probably be doing something with this whole capital square and so you'd bring that in but you can see how I limited that and didn't use any more than I needed to so that high resolution imagery is definitely available and you can see even as you zoom in really close that that's pretty good imagery and so just to give you an idea if we switch back so if I bring in this image or if I turn back on the imagery around the edge um, these aren't quite lining up here but you can see the difference whoops you can see the difference in quality between the stuff that's brought in from the location in SketchUp to the near map imagery. So that got brought in. Another thing that got added is access to their building bundle. And so their building bundle, this is something that comes along with your placemaker um, subscription but their building bundle is basically a collection of like 300 buildings that you can use for like adding context or backgrounds that sort of thing so and, and they vary in what kind of buildings they are like for example there's a whole bunch of the massing model that you can use um, in your background 
you know, there's buildings like this one, and they're all pretty well-modeled buildings that work really good for putting in the background and using as contact. You'll probably see some of these in my future videos, actually, because they're really good. But, um, you know, some of these buildings are really detailed, and like, for example, if I come in here and turn and work with my shadows and change those, you can see how those are all, those all work with the glass materials in here. So they're really great for context. So that's something you should get access to as a part of your placemaker subscription. You can also purchase it separately. So if it's a collection of different buildings that you want, that you want to be able to use, you can also get those without having to have a placemaker subscription. You can purchase those separately. So, and then the last thing that they've added is they've actually added a building maker service. And basically what the building maker service is, is they have a service where if you're working in an area where they don't have this contextual model type stuff around it, they'll actually model that for you. So they'll come in here and they'll actually add the models. And this is only really a service that they're providing in areas where Placemaker doesn't already bring this in. So I would assume it's probably more of like a small town thing. I think it's a pretty affordable service. Uh, you can find that on the Placemaker website. But if you're, you know, if, you, if you're someone that's, um, you know, working with design and needs this context and you just don't have time to go in here and do this yourself. Um, the fees seem like it was pretty low for this kind of thing. So if you're just trying to save time and you've got a little bit of money to spare, they will come in here and model this stuff for you. So that's a new service they provide. That's interesting. I'm going to be interested to see how many people take them up on that. But um, I think it's definitely a good service for people that just don't have, would rather work on their designs rather than the context around their designs. So, and then I will note the other features like putting buildings on terrain, roads on terrain, that sort of thing. Those are all still there as well. So that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something you're interested in? Um, are you interested in Placemaker and what it can do? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.